Gundyr has the same theme in both of his fights, but I feel as though it suits Udix a lot more than it suits the champ. The theme never seems to go all out, like it's just testing the waters at all times. It's grand, it's loud, and it's epic, but not quite as much so as the rest of the songs in the soundtrack. It's very calm throughout the entire song, like it's always in control, always holding back. Well, when you find out that Udix Gundyr literally translates to Judge of Battle, it suddenly makes a lot more sense. Not to mention, again, the strings in choir. Damn, Dark Souls 3 really likes its strings in choir, huh? I'm not going to let my personal bias towards this fight muddy the fact that this is an excellent theme. The first phase is beautiful, and that piano does such a fantastic job of carrying the mood. The whispering exhales and wailing female voice make you feel like you're fighting a ghost, and really captures the grace of Fude. It sounds, ironically enough, cold which is obviously some hella good mood setting given the location of the fight and boss in question. Hearing the Phase 1 music play throughout the entire cutscene that leads into Phase 2 is honestly bone chilling. Father Ariandel's scream ringing out cuts through the song like a knife in the throat. Watching all of the fire explode outward while the song keeps its quiet and reserved tone really adds to the shock value of what you're seeing. That juxtaposition is magical. 
Phase 2 completely drops the piano and trades it for a much louder and more looming choir, emanating the power and determination of both the father and the sister as they desperately try to stop you from ruining their plans. Strings pick up to add to the darker tone of this phase, and they mesh beautifully with the elegant female voice that is still present throughout the entire Phase 2. Phase 3 of the fight is just Phase 2 of the song played at a different point, which is mildly disappointing, but still a fantastic theme. This theme really plays into the duality aspect of this boss, and it shines so nicely because of it. Lorien is represented through the percussion in this fight, which is steady, powerful, and unwavering. It shows his strength, his determination, and his unfaltering love for his younger brother, whom he sacrificed everything for. Lothric is represented by the strings, which are wailing, sorrowful, and hectic. He's still suffering from his curse, and he's angry at the world for damning him and his brother to be merely pawns of fate. Lothric turned his back on the flame, thanks to a familiar pot of whispering in his ear. But, by the time that you reach them, Lothric cares no more for the order of the world, and only seeks to live out his life in peace. He's afraid, he's tired, and he's angry. However, there is one thing that Lothric is strong for. His brother. When you kill Lorien, Lothric teleports down and revives his older brother, using his magic to keep the fight going, and clinging to Lorien's back to assure that he will always be there to resurrect them. This union of brothers, a theme that can even be seen in their weapons, is represented by the choir, and the choir keeps the wailing tone of Lothric's strings, but it radiates that power and determination like Lorien's percussion. The piece swells as these two come together. They're proving to be the only thing they have left as they try their damnedest to drag you off. What an epic piece of storytelling. What a good thing. God of War, a nameless betrayer that allied with the dragons and was erased from history. The very skies bow to the wind, and his mere presence is enough to rock the very mountains to their cores. This theme can only be described as power incarnate. This is what the Dragon Slayer Armor's theme is on an inconceivably larger scale. 
All this time, we have wondered about the Firstborn, and now we get to see him in all of his magnificent glory. This song is dominated by the male choir, drums, and horns. That brass section and overpowering drum beat really do just scream war. I could honestly see this being a theme in the God of War series. The song doesn't even bother trying to make the Nameless King seem regal either. He doesn't care for that guy, or even for his name. All he cares about is protecting the dragons, and you are trespassing. Easily one of the most simple songs on here, but so damn effective. Surprisingly enough, this is a song that's shining gem is also its brass section. The horns in this fight really drive home the point of this being the final confrontation. Everything you've fought for has come to this moment. This is it. Your journey ends here. This is the final challenge. The strings help add to the epic scale of the song, and the hard-hitting percussion is raw power incarnate. The first phase of this fight does everything in its power to make you feel like this is your greatest foe yet. But then... Reno. I died on my first attempt at this boss, because I couldn't believe what my ears were hearing. I dropped my controller and my eyes legitimately began to water. This really was the end, not just of my journey, but of the journey of Dark Souls itself. Hearing that epic male vocalization ring out over those three notes, those iconic three notes, cascading the power and the awe of the first phase into the second, was magical. I could not think of a better theme for the final boss of Dark Souls 3. Truly magnificent.
a scene for you. The world is at an end. All that were once living are now dead. Once mighty kingdoms are now in ruin, and the very fabric of space and time is collapsing in on itself. The world is a massive desert, devoid of all hope, of all life. In this desert, there are only two remaining. A slave who has devoured the souls of the world and brought about the very destruction of the universe, and an ashen one, unfit to even be kindling. Driven mad with his hunger, the slave turns to the ashen one and begins to attack. Two nobodies, in the middle of nowhere, fighting over nothing. And yet, this is the most important fight of the entire series. For if that Ashen One were to win, it would do the unthinkable. Break the cycle. Now imagine all of that in song form. Congratulations, you now have Gale's theme. Everything, from the percussion, the horns, the strings, the choir, they all embody this scene, this epic picture in its entirety. The two most powerful beings that have ever existed in Dark Souls lore. Their very names nobody will even remember. Locked in a dance of death as the world dies at their feet. Power, awe, despair, hope, sorrow, pain, anger, corruption, the very nature of what Dark Souls is, comprised into a single song. No words I could say would ever do this song justice. It is easily the crowning jewel of Dark Souls 3, of Dark Souls as a general thing, in my personal opinion. I kept telling myself over and over that Gale's theme was superior. I kept telling myself that the Abyss Watchers did not deserve the number one spot. But every time I hear this theme, I'm reminded just how much I love this series. The boss fight itself is tragic, as the Abyss Watchers were warriors that took up the duty to vanquish the Abyss wherever it may rear its ugly head, but they inevitably became tainted by the very thing they sought to destroy. Now, cursed to always revive due to the flame, they spend all of eternity cutting one another down, as all they know how to do anymore is fight against the corruption of the abyss. 
this theme is that track and pulled through song. Strings and choir have been a recurring theme in this ranking, but this is easily the song that relies on these two specific elements the most. The song is beautiful, sorrowful, and tragic. Each note feels like an entire stage of grieving the deaths of these once mighty warriors. This song hits especially hard for my fiancé and I, who are both very big fans of Artorias, and grieve not only the Watchers in this song, but him as well. It is... The song that defines what Dark Souls is for me. It is beautiful, it's dangerous, it's hard to get through, it's sad, and more important than anything, it's touching. The song means something to me. I love every single song on this list, if I'm being completely honest, but this is the one that every time I hear it, it takes me back to that first moment I fought the boss. That first time walking through those giant wooden doors and seeing this cutscene. Those first few notes, that female vocalization. It is so heartbreaking. And it truly captures the spirit of Dark Souls in my opinion. And that is why, despite the fact that I think that Gale's theme is indeed technically better, the Abyss Watchers takes the number one spot. Well, that's going to be it for this video. If you like what you saw, leave me a thumbs up, and if you really like what you saw, feel free to subscribe. This video's channel shoutout goes to a channel called Radical Soda. Radical Soda is a video game content creator like myself, and he is absolutely hilarious. He's a big fan of Sonic the Hedgehog, as am I, so go check him out if you like Sonic as well. He's got reviews on nearly every Sonic game out there. He also does some pretty offbeat games from time to time, so if you like really obscure content go check him out he's got a lot of that as well go give him some love he deserves it go tell him his art is good because it is and he draws all of his own thumbnails and they're fantastic go give him a watch please yeah with that being said i will see all of you in the next video